Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronnie Sweat and I'm sure. And in this tutorial, I want to show you a secret or a tool that I use for almost most of my images. And I want to show you what it is going to do and transform. So let me first give you a quick overview about this trick that I tend to use. So this trick, first of all, embeds or conceals that too much rough texture in the photo. And in concealing that texture, it makes or adds a glow to the images. So you may be wondering why most of my images are really nice and shiny and they are really glowing. So I use this technique to add that glow. And secondly, I use the same technique to add a slight color grading effect to the images. And after doing that, I tend to come back and I use the same technique and it really adds shape or dimension to the image. Remember, Oftentimes when you are doing skin retouching, especially using frequency separation, we tend to lose out on the original shape or dimension of the model's faces. So with this technique, we are just going to be bring back and make those nice and beautiful shapes or dimensions on the model's face really prominent and pop up. So we just want to make that face really pop out and not look flat and boring at all. So if at all you are watching and you feel like this is a tool that you have always wanted and you have always sought for, make sure that you hit the like button on this video. Or if at all you have a query, make sure that you let me know in the comment section because every single query that you apply or leave in the comment section gives me an idea about the next tutorial that I'm going to be uploading on this channel. So let's dive in for today's tutorial. So I'm just going to come right here to the adjustments and you're going to use the curves adjustment layer. So I'm just going to click on curves. So you don't have to play around with this adjustment. Just leave it the way it is. Don't even rename it at this point. So after doing this, you're just going to come to select and you come down to color range. So under color range, it is going to bring for us this window. And before you can proceed with anything, just come and make sure sample size a 3x3 or 5x5 average. The reason for doing this is because we want the eyedropper tool to make a very nice and precise and more accurate selection of the target area that we want to use. So for this case, we want first of all target the highlights of this image. So, and before we can target the highlights, we just want to come and make sure that we have the settings right in this dialog box right here. So come to select and make sure sampled colors has been checked or is selected and make sure localized color color clusters has not been checked detect faces is not checked make sure the invert option is also not checked and make sure the first eyedropper tool has been highlighted or selected and right here make sure selection is also active or highlighted or selected and under selection preview make sure quick mask has been checked or selected so in this, we are just going to come and first of all, click on an area that has highlights in this image. So I'm just going to come and make a single left click on the area that I feel has highlights in the image. So that area has highlights. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come and play around with the fuzziness. And as I'm playing around with the fuzziness, you can see right here, you can see under this little preview right here, you can see the target area that is the highlights are going to either appear white or gray in color. So move the fuzziness up to a point when you feel like it is really making a decent selection. So for this case, I feel like these areas have highlights in this image. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come back and hit OK. And it's going to take us back into Photoshop to refine the selection that we just created. So remember, we targeted highlights and we just want to make the highlights prominent. And in this case, as we're making highlights prominent in this photo, we are just going to be dodging the image. So I'm just going to make a midpoint right here. And I'm going to brighten up. So you can see, when I take this all the way up, you can see the effect it does to the image. So don't overdo it. Just add a slight brightening, just like that. And as you can see, this makes or transforms the image even more. So I'm just going to close this. And I'm going to rename this adjustment layer by double clicking right there i'm going to name this to dodge or you can name it to light if at all you want to be precise 
so dodge or light so i'm going to come back and i make the same adjustment for the dark areas or the, sh the shadow areas so i'm just going to come back to the adjustments and i come to the curves adjustment layers and i'm going to come back to select and come down to color range so don't rename this before you come back to color range so in this case i'm just going to first of all make sure you turn off the caps lock if at all your tool or your eyedropper tool is looking like this cross icon make sure you turn off the caps lock key because every single time you leave on the caps lock key it really makes it like a cross like icon or this target kind of thing so make sure you turn it off and in this case we just want to target the shadows in this photo so look for the area that has shadows and for this case i feel like this area has shadows in this image or you can even go with the nose area to target the shadows so just click in that area and you can come around and play around with the fuzziness remember what i just said the white or lightest areas in this preview are going to be the targeted areas so you can see that we have really targeted a wide range of the shadows within uh, this photo you can see those areas have been targeted so you can play around with the fuzziness to see what really works best for you so i feel like right here is good I'm going to come and hit OK. So after hitting OK, we're just going to come back to this midpoint. And this, remember, we are just dealing with shadows in this image. So I'm just going to click right in the middle. And I'm going to darken. You can see it even color grades the image for us and adds that nice and beautiful color within the image. So I'm just going to slightly darken just like that. So I'm just going to close this. So that you can see the before and after for the shadow areas and this is the before and after for the light areas but as you're looking at all this it is affecting the overall image in this case so as it is even affecting some of the colors that we just don't want to be affected and is even brightening up the background you can see that so what we want to do we're just going to come the blend mode and change the blend mode from normal to luminosity so that colors are not being affected and we are going to change the second one to also luminosity so that the color values are not affected in this case. So after doing that, we are just going to put the two in the group by clicking on Ctrl and clicking on both layers and hitting Ctrl Command G on the keyboard to group them. And we are just going to create a layer mask. So in order to create a layer mask, hold on the alternate key on the keyboard. So alternate or option and click on this mask icon or layer mask icon. And it's going to hide everything from the overall image. So how layer masks work, black hides and white reviews. So using a soft round brush, hardness at 0% at, and opacity at 100% and flat 100%, make sure you have black and white. And in order to reset, to reset if at all you have different colors, click on these two small boxes and make sure white is on top by using X on the keyboard or you can just use this arrow to switch between black and white. So using a white brush, I'm just going to paint through the areas that we want to be affected by the effect that we just applied to the photo. So remember, we don't want the effect on the background of this image. So I'm just going to paint in the areas I want to be affected in this case. And I feel like uh, the face is a favorite area and part of the hands. You can apply it and you can see by doing this, it even adds a glow to this photo but sometimes you feel like you have really done so much and you just want to dial back or reduce on the effect or the opacity of that so you can see the before and after before after so if at all you feel like it is too much just come the opacity and reduce or drop down or reduce on the effect of the overall effect from affecting the overall image so you can see this has done almost four things for us so it has added shape and dimension to the photo and you can see it has also color graded the image and it has added shape or shine to the image and really it has made the image look really and pop even more so this is it for this story and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe if at all you are watching and don't subscribe this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing shows. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.